A few years ago, we used to release Send Server and we'd have a lot of bugs that would come in immediately after the release. Not just bugs from the customer, but bugs from our other Citrix products that were a bit blindsided by our release and hadn't done enough testing with us to make sure that things would work smoothly together. There was a pivotal moment where we realized that we were about to make another release and we thought, let's not do that mistake again. And we contacted a, an excellent colleague in the London office. We phoned him up and basically said, we realize we've had cross swords in the past. We've released software to you that's been broken. And this, this gentleman said, sure, well, why don't we come down, and talk, come down and talk about it? So I remember three of us jumped in a car and we went down to London that day. The best thing we did about the meeting was we just sat and listened. And we never had done that before with this, this individual. And he basically talked about the problems he'd had with our software in the past and the problems his team had with our software in the past. And we just listened. And we said, we'll go and think about this and go and come back with a solution. Over the months after that, we worked on a document with him, which was before he would accept anything into his process, what's the, the things it must do before he could even consider using it? And this document became like four or five pages long. It eventually became test cases, but it really, it was basically basic principles of what our software should do before it could even kind of enter into his mindset as being a useful thing. We converted that into test cases and we never gave him software ever again that hadn't gone through that document. Gone through the test cases, but also we, ran, we read the document religiously. And again, there was a great moment when we gave him the first release and we told him, look, we've read the document. It failed, the software fails categories four, five, and nine. It passes all the rest. Martin, do you think it's good enough? And he said, oh yeah, yeah, four, five, and nine, I don't mind, that's great. And that was because I realized it wasn't all about clauses four, five, and nine. It was all about the fact that we cared. We'd read the document, we had checked it. The fact that we were nervous about whether we'd accept it or not, and the fact that we'd listened. And that was our first thing where we understood that uh, understanding people's outer triangles was important. But what Arbinger did for us was actually to realize that that was not just a one-off thing that, hey, it worked for Martin. It's gonna work for Zen Desktop. It's gonna work for that release. We, it made us understand that the fact that you do that systematically, it kind of usually always works. And so that's what we do now. We try to talk to as many of the other parts of Citrix that use our product as possible to get that same kind of reaction, to get that same kind of acceptance. And it's been spectacular. We now have a, a Thursday evening meeting with all these product groups every single week. And all we talk about is, so what problems are we causing you? What breakage are we likely to cause you? How can we stop that? And those are some of the most effective meetings we have in the whole week. Since we've been doing these careful listening sessions before we make product changes, we carefully track a thing called customer raised unique defects. So this is a bug, that's an escape bug that's gone out into the market. Then we've actually reduced the number of CRUDs, the CRUDs, CRUDs. We've reduced them by nearly 400% on our releases. We track them as a function of time after our release, and we've actually fundamentally changed the gradient of the graph of how many unique defects our customers find after release, up to you know, a year after release. So we know we're on the right track here, and we know we've got the metric to, to make it better. In terms of salaries, we're talking about a, a, an improvement of about half a million uh, pounds a year in terms of actual freeing up new engineering time without having to hire anybody, without having to train anybody, without having to go through the full recruitment cycle. That's actually just directly going into the product.